Imagine a little boy sitting on the stand in open court. That's troubling enough. But now imagine that the story he has to tell is one that could rob him of his mother forever. How old are you? Seven. Who is this or what is this? My mama. And what is she doing? Killing my sister. I've got to ask you this, because mm -hmm. I want to see your reaction. Mm -hmm. but did you kill Adriana? No, I did not. Did you dunk her in that pool until she drowned? No. There are only two possible penalties that can be imposed for the crime of first-degree felony murder. They are either death or life imprisonment. <laughs> and I'm just empty. I just emptied the gun and I ran. I ran, I ran. The decomposing body of Jimmy Jost was found in Southwest Austin with 10 gunshot wounds. I've been a police officer for 25 years. I've been a detective for 17. And no, I have not seen anyone plan it to this detail. Do you still love him? Yes. We have a child. Think you'll always love Jimmy? Yes. What's wrong, ma'am? My daughter fell in the pool and she's not breathing. Where at, ma'am? Uh, in Esto. And she's not breathing? How old is she? She's seven years old. Oh, God. Just a second, ma'am. Her lips are purple. What do I do? Uh. Holmes County Sheriff's deputies are investigating their second tragic water incident involving a child in just three days. Now, this latest happened about 3 o'clock this afternoon in the community of Esto. Authorities say a seven-year-old girl drowned while playing a swimming pool. I was on my way to meet Amanda Lewis, the mother of AJ and Adriana, who died when she was seven. Amanda has spent the last eight years in prison. Tell me, in your own words, exactly what happened on the day that Adriana died. We had went outside, the kids were playing, and I had to step back inside. And when I stepped back inside, um, somewhere along the point, she had went and got the wagon, and she had pulled the wagon beside the pool. And she had gotten in the wagon, her footprint was in the wagon, and somewhere along the line, she fell in with a dishpan. So AJ comes in and tells you what? That Adriana was playing in the pool. I thought he meant she was standing beside the pool, splashing in the water. Um, I looked out the back door, and that's when I could barely see her floating in the pool. You run outside? Mm-hmm. And you get her out of the pool? Mm-hmm. How did she look to you? She was slightly purple. Um, I put her on the ground, and tried to get the water to drain out and started doing CPR. Did you realize that she had died before they even got there? No. Um, when they got there and EMT, the fire work, the fire people was doing CPR, they had slightly got her back and they were going to airlift her to Panama City. When you get to the hospital, what happens? And the doctor come in and said that Adriana was gone. What impact did those words have on me? It was like part of me was gone. And it was part that I'd never be able to get back. To me, my kids, they made my world. They made me 
a stronger person. They made me feel like I was everything that I was supposed to be. We're going to present the testimony of a seven-year-old little boy in a big courtroom such as this with people. He's going to come in here and you're going to be total strangers to him. Uh, but he's going to try to do his best when he gets up here. I'm not asking you to believe him just because he comes in here. I'm asking to you just to be patient and listen to his testimony and then give it the credibility that you determine that it deserves. You will hear how A.J. saw his mother dunk his sister into the pool. That's what led to the death of Adriana Elaine Hutto. Thank you for your attention. Sheriff, just tell me exactly the scene that you encountered when you got here, where the pool was, where Amanda was, where Adriana was. When I got here, there was fire trucks here, ambulances, and other patrol cars from the Sheriff's Department. The pool was right out there. You see the pile of wood? Mm -hmm. It was in front of it, coming this way several feet, but it was right out in that area. Now, when I got here, they had Adriana, they was working on her there. Amanda had got back in the house and was in the living room in the mm -hmm. floor in the house whenever I got here. What was your gut feeling about what had happened here, your first feeling? We treated it as an accident, accidental drowning. Uh, the little boy, AJ, was here and his grandparents had got here and we let them take AJ and take care of him after we got the mother in the car and got her gone. Well. We had left and I had got back to the sheriff's department whenever the grandmother called me and said, Sheriff, I need to bring AJ down there and let him tell you what he's told me. I was sitting at that desk right there when I got that phone call, okay? And I remember Dennis Lee saying, I need you to look at this case. And I'm like, Dennis, I'm swamped down here, you know? And he said, no, really, I, I want you to look, at, just, just look at this interview of this little boy. And they brought it down a couple of days later. Uh, a, a, another prosecutor, we were working on another case and she was in here and we watched that and we were like, wow, you know? Is he telling the truth, you know? Who threw her in the pool? My mama. Mom. Mama threw who in the pool? My sister, Adriana. Okay. And then what happened when she threw her in the pool? She started holding her face. So Adriana started screaming, so I went, pow, 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 with my gun. Okay. So mama said, stop it! Okay. So I didn't stop it, so she, so AJ screamed, AJ, AJ, call the police. You said your mom held her face. How did she hold her face? Yeah. An Esto woman is in the Holmes County Jail tonight, charged with killing her own daughter. At least one witness says they saw Lewis pushing the little girl underwater. Lewis has reportedly denied she killed her own child. She is due in court tomorrow morning for a bond hearing. Amanda was a single mom, a care worker on night shifts. She was just 27 when Adriana died. I thought I had a good life, I had a good job. Two beautiful children, you know, even though my parents were divorced, I still had a good family life. What was your relationship like with your two kids? I had a good relationship with them. Adriana's, it was a little bit tougher just because she was dealing with what she was dealing with, but I never had a bad relationship with them. They were always happy. We always did things together, you know, 
McDonald's. Adriana had apparently ADHD. Mm -hmm. Was that medically diagnosed? Mm -hmm. What did that do to her as a young girl? How did it make her behave? Sometimes she was real rambunctious, always wanting to go and do, could rarely sit down, rarely watch a movie. But other than that, she was just on the go all the time. You loved her? Oh, of course. Very much. She was just a miniature version of me. In what way? Every way. What do you mean? Um, physically, she was identical to me. Her demeanors, her mannerisms, down to the way she walked, was just like me. And temperamentally, was she like you? She was quick to throw a fit, but she was still a good child. She was still a good little girl. I told you uh, briefly what AJ had said. I don't know how to put this, but he, he seems to believe that you drowned at her. Well, I don't know why he would think that. I mean, I wasn't even out there. I was in the house. Why would he accuse you of drowning your daughter? He does like to tell stories. I mean, he's got, a, I don't know if I'd say weird, but he does have a very big imagination. Mm -hmm. How would you feel about taking a polygraph? I'd be fine with it. You think that might be beneficial? Well, evidently, because I know, you know everybody's looking at me. The only way the state could present a homicide case was to rely on the testimony of, in my opinion, an incompetent witness. I've been doing this for a long time. A.J. told us the truth. He told us what he's seen that day. A.J., if you'll come right over here and just have a seat in that chair right over there, OK? I found him to be a credible witness. If I did not believe he was a credible witness, I never would have put him on the stand in the first place. Now, this is my microphone right here, all right? When he walks through the door into the courtroom, mm -hmm. and you see him for the first time since all this has happened, what is your reaction? I miss him, and I wish that I could pick him up and hug him. Um, I was very upset because I couldn't believe they were doing this because he's only a child. But just disbelief. AJ didn't recognize you mm -mm. at first. He hadn't seen you for a while. Mm -hmm. And then he does. Mm -hmm. And he bursts into tears. Mm -hmm. And you burst into tears. I wanted to get up and go to him. Um, and I even asked my attorney, just please stop, just make them stop. But I couldn't. Can you tell me what a lie is? It's not the truth. Can you tell me what the truth is? It's not a lie. Okay. Um, if I told you your mother was in the courtroom here today, would that be the truth? No, so. That would not be the truth. Why is that? Because she's not in the courtroom? No, so. Where is your mother? Jail. She's in jail. That woman sitting right there between them, have you ever seen her before? Yes, sir. Who is that? My mother. Now you recognize your mother? Yes, sir. Hey, James. Hey, James. Yes, sir. Give me your hand. All right. Here. Here.
this case could never have come to court were it not for the testimony of seven-year-old AJ. When the police asked Amanda to take that lie detector test, she passed. In your career, have you had a case that's incensed you quite like this one? I mean, this is probably the worst of the worst. Uh, when, when, the, when, the, when the factual complexion of the case is so clearly pointing in one direction uh, that indicates that this was a tragic accident. What do you think happened? Just talk me through what you think happened. I believe the children planned on swimming in the pool, but that they had to get the bugs out of the pool. I think Adriana stood in the red wagon next to the pool, was leaning over the pool with the metal pan that was found floating in the pool and was in the process of scooping up bugs from the pool when she fell head first into the pool, causing the water to come over the side of the pool and fill the little red wagon that was found by the emergency responder who immediately surmised that this was a case of accidental drowning. This is a case that we believe she maliciously punished her daughter, Adriana, and she just went too far. She was under a lot of stress. She was tired. She had tried various other forms of discipline that appeared not to be working, at least to Amanda Lewis. And uh, that is what we think happened. Why are you so sure? Why is there no element of doubt in your mind? As you will recall, the pool was anywhere from 32 inches to 35 inches high. Adriana was 47 inches tall. If she had have just simply fell into the pool as an accident, all she would have had to do was stand up as she had done before when she was in that pool and she would not have been drowned. It had a very strong, the whole house smelled of urine and feces. It had a stench of urine. You could hardly stay in that room. I mean, you had to get a breath and go in there and then come right back out. Okay, you may be seated. Amanda Lewis, how do you know her? She's my daughter. Adriana Hutta, how did you know her? She was my granddaughter. Did she seem to have your daughter seemed to have a short temper with Adriana. Yes, sir. She, she did have a short temper with her at times. How about AJ? Did she have a short temper with AJ? Not as much. Some people have said you weren't a good mother, and they put that down to when the police went in they smelt urine in mm -hmm. the, the younger kids' room. They didn't see any toys. Mm -hmm. They felt from what they were picking up from people that you were pretty tough, lost your temper. As far as the smell of urine, she wet the bed quite a bit. Um, but there was also a dog in the house that urinated on everything. Did you physically punish the kids, Adriana and AJ? No, for the most part, they got time out. Um, what did that mean? Time out benches or the corner. Um, there was only one time that I really did spank Adriana and she had little marks on her little backside cheeks, but. Why did you do that? I can't even remember what she did that, um, yes, I do. She wrote throughout my car with she, a permanent marker. What did she write? Loser. And I don't even know where she got the word from. One of your colleagues at the care center remembered you saying you were so annoyed about Adriana's behavior one day. You said, oh, I want to kill her. Now, given what happened, mm -hmm. People could put two and two together and think, well, there, there we are. I did not say I wanted to kill her. I said, oh, my goodness, I could have just killed her. About the car? About the car. 
she came in and she was very upset, very irate. And we said, what's wrong, Amanda? She said, I'm just going to kill him and kill her. And I was like, don't say that. She was just like at the end of her rope that morning. Like she just couldn't take it anymore. What did you mean when you said, I could have killed her? That it just frust it frustrated me to the point of being angry. Okay, I want to show you this photograph here, 1B. Let's just move that one out of the way. 1B. Now, whose red wagon is that? Mine. How did that wagon get there? My mom pulled it all the way from there, all the way back okay. to here. All right. Now, did you draw a picture? Yes, sir. Tell me, AJ, what is this? right here. Who is this or what is this? My mama. Okay. And what is she doing? Killing my sister. How is she doing that, AJ? Putting her hand over her face. What is this right here? My mother's arm. Your mother's arm? Yes, sir. What does this mean right here? She did. Die. What? Die. what? She died. She died, okay. You mean your sister died? Okay. What this too bad, what does that mean? That means it's scary. It was scary? So the jury had to decide, did they believe AJ? Or was this just another tragic case of the most common cause of accidental child death in Florida, drowning? I've got four kids and when they were all of that age, of AJ's age, I'm not sure how reliable they would have been in recollecting what had happened given the trauma of what went on just a few yards away. Why are you so confident that AJ was telling the truth? In the statement AJ gave us, the first one he gave us, he said that his mama done that to his sister's face. He told us his sister had got in trouble that morning because she had took blue, blue spray, which he called Windex later on, sprayed the TV. We got the search warrant, we went in and got the Windex out from under the kitchen sink sent it to the lab and they put Adriana's fingerprint on there. It was a positive match. Mm -hmm. He told us that he had seen a man cutting down trees on a tractor. We confirmed that West Florida Electric was out here mowing the right of way for the electric lines that morning. He told us that he seen the army men flying over. We contacted uh, Fort Rooker. They confirmed that this was in the flight pattern that day for their helicopters. You know, we confirmed everything he told us basically which added legitimacy to his story. But it is also true that as he recounted his story a number of further times, he was inconsistent. I mean, his story did change. It wasn't always completely the same. The consistency of what we were able to confirm stayed the same. But it's such an exceptional circumstance for such a young child to in the end be the pivotal reason why somebody is found guilty of first degree murder. But you know, he's a young child who didn't know to do anything but to tell us what he saw that day. AJ said that he saw you do it. Is everything that boy said a complete fabrication? He just misremembered everything he'd watched. I mean, pretty extraordinary for a, a young boy to invent a story about his mum murdering his sister, isn't it? Everything he said was not true, but everything wasn't a lie. I believe what happened, he took a series of events and put them all in one day. Um, she had gotten in trouble for spraying something a week prior, and he put it that it happened that morning. So everything he said was not 
a lie. I just believe he fabricated a series of events into one day. There was one piece of evidence the prosecution argued proved AJ's version of events. On that day, were you present when an autopsy was performed on Adriana Hutto? Yes, I was. Did you observe any injuries to her body, ma'am? Yes. Tell us what you observed. But the most significant were the two on the midline of the forehead. Um, also noted are two smaller bruises to the right side of the forehead over here. I placed my hand over the bruises, and um, as you can see on the side of the cheek here, um, it lined up perfectly with the side of my left thumb. This would be the index finger where it lined up. If you would, ma'am, just use your left hand as you would on your face, demonstrating to the jury how that would have been. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. No further questions. Can you go to the very beginning where it says resume or whatever? Who was in the pool? Adrian. Did your mama get in the pool? No. Adrian was just in the pool with mama. But Adrian was playing like this and mama holding him on it. And so she went scream. Today? So it's under Florida law there are only two possible penalties that can be imposed for the crime of first-degree felony murder. They are either death or life imprisonment. This court judges you to be guilty of that crime and sentences you to imprisonment in the Florida Department of Corrections for the remainder of your life. Do you still hope to get out of here? Every day. How do you hope to achieve that? through the courts, proving that I'm innocent, proving that what they said I did, I didn't do. And I fight every day to prove it. And I'll continue until I do. What do you feel about AJ? He's now 15, you've not seen him for seven, eight years since he was in that courtroom testifying against you. Mm -hmm. If you had the chance to speak to him, what would you say to him? that I love him. And no matter what, I will always love him. And that in no way do I blame him for what's happened. As AJ waved to his mother that day in court, it would be the last time she would see him. AJ now has a new family. He's been adopted. But in three years' time, he will be old enough to decide for himself whether he wants to see his mother again. Thank you very much and welcome to the 1990 Miss Texas USA pageant. And what fun it is to be back here. She surprised him, came out of the attic area, and she just started shooting and unloaded the Glock in his body, I believe, 10 times. According to the FBI, women who commit murder are three times more likely than men to kill someone they love. In 2004, in southern Texas, a former beauty queen committed a brutal and infamous murder. She shot her millionaire lover 10 times. As you're even going in through the garage door, which was open, you could just smell uh, a decomposition odor coming from inside. 
and it just got stronger and stronger as we continued to enter in. How bad was the scene that you discovered? Well, the actual scene itself was, was pretty bad. I mean, the victim had been there for enough time to where he was decomposing. And it, it was confusing when we were looking at it at first as how someone in their own house could be shot in the location in the manner like he was an intruder almost to a, a point based on uh, how it looked in his own house. From where you saw all the bullets and where they had flown and where they'd landed, talk me through what you think happened. It looks like he was walking down the hall, two bullets went, one went into the door that he was by, and then one went into the wall, and it tore up his right, right side and into his torso area as well. Um, and then, and then you found, we found some shell casings right near him. That's someone who wanted to kill somebody. That someone is Rhonda Glover. She has been in Texas State Prison for the last 10 years. Good to meet you. I'm Piers. Nice to see you, Rhonda. Her victim was a wealthy oil man, Jimmy Jost. Rhonda has always claimed it was in self-defense. There's this guy that you had this great passionate love for, and he for you. There have been good times and bad. There have been all sorts of stuff that's gone down, and yet there's a moment when you have a gun in your hand and you shoot him dead, and you stand over him and you empty the, the magazine. Dad, I never stood over him, and that's a lie too. There were 10 bullets discharged. Do you dispute that? Or was yes. That there were, there, ten there were there were ten discharged, but six were to his elbow, okay. trying to stop him. Okay. Yeah, I was never trying to kill him. You didn't want to kill him. No. What no. did you want to do to him? Well, when he started, see, here we are talking about it, and yeah, I but, can't. But I but I can't. Because here's the thing, Rhonda, I, want, I wish you, I could. But Rhonda, let me let me explain to you why this is important. People just think of you as this monster murderess, who blazed bullets into the man she loved, right? And it was a horrific, cold-blooded, premeditated murder. That's what you, they think you did. Mm -hmm. And I'm only asking you one thing about it, is in that moment, how did you feel? I just went into like a complete state of shock. <laughs> just standing there, just like, oh my God. It was my worst nightmare realized. <sighs> If you had your time again, Rhonda, in that moment, what would you do? Knowing what happened. I don't know. I don't know what I could have done differently. I honestly don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just know that I'm very lucky to be alive. I do know that I almost died that day. Jimmy's body lay undiscovered for four days. Rhonda went on the run, taking their nine-year-old son. But the police caught her 600 miles away in Kansas. These are so tight. They're yeah. everything I walk. Unfortunately, that's the uh, yeah, they're the feds, the yeah, uh, US Marshals. I know they're up against Josh. I just don't know what's going on. So okay, there's no. I was on vacation with my son. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just what do you know? We went to I was gonna go on audition for a um, a Nashville show. I'm mm -hmm. a singer. Mm -hmm. And so I had my guitar and my piano with me and I chickened out when I got there. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I didn't. Did you go shoot that day? Did I go shoot at Red's that day? Yes. So you did ever get in college, didn't you? Yes, I did. In the years before the murder, Rhonda and Jimmy were part of the oil rich elite in Texas. They were together, off and on, for over a decade. He was devoted to her. He worshipped her. She controlled him, and he just loved her and worshipped every 
second of every day. When did you first meet Rhonda? And what was your first impression? I met Rhonda back during the, uh, the, the late 70s, you know, early 80s, during the disco days. Everybody was hanging out at the discos and hanging out at the bars. And, and she was just one of the girls that hung out everywhere and one of the beautiful Texas blondes that you saw out all the time. Was the big catch for women like Rhonda an oil guy? It was a total prize. I mean, if you were to, to write a story about the art of the deal for, um, for women back in those days, and they latch on to an oil man, they go from an apartment to a million dollar house in River Oaks. I think that she saw a different world that she wanted access to. She grew up with cowboys, rodeo, and Jimmy came from a different world, a world of more sophistication and I think that's what she was looking for. Jimmy first set eyes on Rhonda while watching the 1990 Miss Texas beauty pageant on television. When he saw me, he said, I'm going to marry that girl. And he became determined to meet me and to seek me out. People thought you made a great couple when you first got together. Is that? Is that how you felt in the end? I mean, did you find him attractive? Yes, I did. And he, Handsome? Yeah, and he was funny. He was very funny, and he could cook. He introduced me to, you know, a lifestyle that I, um, I had never experienced before with having a lot of people over and, and big parties and... You loved him? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Like deeply. proper, passionate love? Um... You said deeply that? Yes, I, I did, but I'm trying to explain to you, Pierce, that it didn't last very long. I understand that, <laughs> but I want you just to try and remember the good times. Mm -hmm. There must have been between you a real draw, a real love. Yes, and then when we had our son, that kept me hoping that we could have a normal life. But his obsession with me, um, <clears throat> Jimmy had a, pers a person, a persona that he put on in public and one very dark one in private. So it's really hard to sit here and talk about the great times when there were very few in the beginning. I, it just, it turned bad. It turned bad rather quickly, Pierce. It did. I've been a police officer for 25 years. I've been a detective for 17. All of it's in violent crimes. And no, I have not seen anyone plan it to this detail. I, I did do it. I did. He came after me and I did That's do all it. Want to know That's all I want to know is just what happened. We want to give you the The decomposing body of Jimmy Jost was found in southwest Austin with 10 gunshot wounds. Glover said she shot him because he beat her and she thought he was going to kill her. She couldn't ever get rid of him until finally, when he ran out of money, then she decided to kill him. He came at me and we struggled and I got to my brief case and I got the gun and he, he hit me. And he was screaming, you fucking bitch, I'll kill you in a demonic voice, just like Satan would. <laughs> and I just emptied, I just emptied the gun and I ran, I ran, I ran. <laughs> he just fell, he just fell. What exactly happened on that final fateful day of Jimmy's life? Well, the evidence shows that she went to a shooting range here in Austin called Reds. She had been there before. She practiced with the gun that she used to kill Jimmy. She went about 10 minutes away to Jimmy's house after having called him, and our belief was to lure him to the house. And she went up into the um, upstairs area where there was an attic attached to a bedroom, and she waited. 
our belief was that Jimmy would have done just about anything for Rhonda and was probably very excited that she had called him. And she surprised him, came out of the attic area, and she just started shooting, and he turned and, and then fell. And that the evidence from the medical examiner was that the wounds were consistent with her having shot him as he lay dying or dead. She fled and was eventually arrested in Kansas. Rhonda still claims Jimmy violently abused her, but there is no compelling evidence to prove that. There is, though, compelling evidence it was premeditated. A month before the murder, she practiced killing Jimmy at a gun range. The first time that you go to the gun range is about a month or so before Jimmy dies. Obviously, from the outside, you look at that and you think, well, that's a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Why is Rhonda going to a gun range for the first time so soon to Jimmy's death? Mm -hmm. Why did you go that first time? First of all, the owners of Top Gun are the Saragusas, and that's Rocky's uncle. So if I'm going to murder somebody, I certainly wouldn't have gone to a gun range where the people know me. What are you really thinking about? What, what's concerning you enough to want to go and learn how to fire a gun suddenly? Well, he came to my apartment 12 times trying to get in to get to me. So you've gone to the range because you want to protect yourself? I've, I, really, I really felt that if he just knew that I had a gun, like because the Saragusas knew us, or even if he saw that I had one, then he would stop stalking me because I lived in a paranoid life of when is he going to, to when is my day coming? When is he gonna be, when is he gonna finish me off? Because he was so serious that if he could not have me, no one would. Why should I believe you? Why should you believe me? Because the facts are there, Pierce. If you look hard enough, the facts are there. And I want you to look. I'm begging you to look at the case from a different perspective and not, not just listen to what these other people are saying. She planned this. She ran through a scenario, bought a gun, ran through a scenario on how to use the gun in a scenario. That's the scenario she used to kill Jimmy. And then she ran. She didn't go to the police. She didn't call anybody and say, hey, you know, he just tried to do this to me or that to me and I killed him and I, I'm worried they will blame me for it. She, she ran. She didn't reach out to anybody. She ran. And she was trying to hide from the police until we caught her. She's a calculated, cold-hearted murderer. Only Rhonda knows why she took the life of Jimmy Jost that day. She surely must have known that by doing so, she would ruin her own life too. First off, I miss my buddy. He was a good guy, all right? And you look back, hell, I'm 64 now. Jimmy would have been 66 or 67. When we were doing all of, going nuts and chasing women and having a blast, we were in our early 30s and our 40s. And you look back on it, you, you, you miss him, he, just, he was fun to be around. There's always something going on. And when you look at Rhonda, and I kind of feel sorry for Rhonda. She just made a serious big ass mistake. I'll say hello to her, I'll sit down and have lunch with her. I don't, you know, I'm not gonna hate her. You, you forgive a lot when you get older. You don't have time to hate anymore. We the jury having found the defendant Rhonda Lee Glover guilty of the offense of murder assess her punishment at confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for a term of 46 years. On a human level, this is excruciatingly difficult to talk to somebody who's incarcerated in prison for as long as you have to be and have already been, right? Sure. Living with the consequences of what happened that day. If Jimmy was here now, what would you say to him? I haven't thought that far. I haven't thought that far. What would I would say to him? If I... you had the chance to speak to him one more time, what would you say? Would you? Why, why would he? Why would he want to hurt us? 
If he loved us so much, why would he do all those things to us? Why would he hurt us? Would you apologize to him for killing him? Yeah. And I would tell him that I didn't mean to kill him. I really believed I shot him in the elbow six times. Do you still, Rhonda, do you, do you still love him? Yes. We have a child. Think you'll always love Jimmy? Yes. Rhonda, I give you your time. Thank you. Rhonda Glover will serve at least another 11 years in prison for killing the man she loved.